Thank you. Love you, man. Bless you, Pastor Nick. Past, um, I was, I, first time I visited Harvest Time was back in the old Civic Center when you guys were in the Civic Center and uh, Judy Minch was on staff and, and that's when I, Brother Glenn first invited me to come and have lunch with him. So before this, this vision was birthed, uh, back in the Civic Center. So um, I know that God's got great things in store for uh, this house. I know he's got great things in store for each one of you. And uh, Pastor Nick uh, grew up right around the corner from where actually I live now. So I, uh, every morning, um, I prayer walk and I talk with God every morning. Every morning I wake up early and I do my prayer walk with God. And I walk... Uh, the area where he used to bike ride. And so this morning on my prayer walk, on my early morning prayer walk and God talk, um, as I talk to God and as I meditate with God in nature, I do that, try to do that discipline every morning and get in nature and, and absorb the nature and absorb God in the nature and listen to God's voice. And he speaks to me everywhere. Where This is my father's world. And uh, that old hymn, and to my listening ear, the rocks and beads, the, the, the birds, the things, they, he speaks to me everywhere. And so as I was walking this morning, a biker rode by me for the first time in months, and it kind of startled me, and I thought of Pastor Nick. And so I was like, Lord bless Pastor Nick, I'm going to be with him tonight. And uh, anyways, but um, I just, it's a joy to be here, and I love Pastor Glenn so much, and I love Sister Denise so much. Uh, we have such a great relationship for so many, so many years. And uh, I've been in Waterbury, uh, pastoring First Assembly there now for 16 years uh, as the senior pastor. And we've just seen the miraculous. We've just seen God break forth, break loose, and break out. And we believe that that's going to happen here tonight. Uh, in your life, whatever you need, whatever's going on in your life, we believe the Spirit of God is going to uh, break, break out tonight. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. You know, the Lord says in Zechariah 4, 6. So we believe God's going to do us a suddenly here tonight. Amen? And we appreciate Pastor Nick and all the staff. And we went to Africa with Pastor Glenn and, uh, and uh, Pastor Karen and, and Pastor Steve. And so we have a, a good relationship with the whole staff here. And uh, I wanted to thank my, my children's pastor, Pastor Lee Joe, and my, my head administrator that's been with me 11 years. And you've been with Pastor Glenn 11 years, Pastor Ida DuPaul. And so thank you so much for coming and uh, being here tonight and praying and they, they just have such a prayer spirit. Um, but anyways, let's pray. And I believe that I have a word that's just going to really encourage you tonight. Amen. Father, we just ask you for the spirit of wisdom. We ask you for the spirit of understanding. We ask you for the spirit of revelation in the fear of the Lord. As Paul prayed, the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. Lord, that you would enlighten our eyes tonight that we would see who we are in Christ, that we would see Christ high and lifted up, and we would see who we are in Christ. Lord, let, let that revelation come now. Let us see the inheritance in the saints. Let us see the glorious power of the gospel working in us and through us. Let us see the exceeding, let us see our inheritance in the saints. Let us see our inheritance tonight. Let us see what you've planned for us and that you've destined for us and that what we receive by faith, we receive it tonight in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Can we pray one more prayer for Pastor Glenn? Amen. I, I just love praying and I know you do too. So our church has the same DNA of this church. So, Father, we just pray for Pastor Glenn. We just pray for uh, Sister Denise, their children, just to be refreshed, renewed during their vacation time, that you will just download just new thoughts and new messages. And, and Lord, but they'll even just be refreshed in their emotions and in their body and in their, their spirit. They'll be refreshed in every area in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. We, we just sent out our fourth missions team this summer to Peru. 
And uh, we have a team right now in Africa and uh, doing nine nations and impacting Africa with, with signs and wonders and miracles uh, led by um, prophet Paul Mpanga. And he goes into parts of Africa where they tell him, do not drink anything, do not eat anything. Uh, everything is poisoned. There's witches. They're, they hate believers. They hate prophets. They, hate, they, they will try to kill you. Do not eat anything. Do not drink. He brings breakthrough in. He brings signs, wonders. He went up into a concentration camp. And he went into a concentration camp, 200 people, northern Sudan. He looks Muslim. He looks Muslim with the beard and everything. So everybody thinks he's Muslim. And he gets up there and he starts preaching the gospel through his interpreter. And uh, he, they, he says, who wants to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And all 200 people stand up. He says, no, no, you didn't understand. No, you didn't understand. Sit back down. And he preaches the gospel again. He preaches the, the message of Christ, and he says, who wants to get born again? All 200 of them stood. He said, no, no, you didn't understand. Sit down again. And he preached the gospel of message. All 200 people surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. He led them in the sinner's prayer. Signs, wonders, miracles happening in his life. Amen? That's Fruit don't lie. And so fruit don't lie. People can say a lot of things or do this or do that, but the Bible, Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits. What type of fruit is coming out of your life? What type of fruit is coming out of those around you? That's the mark of the type of person. That's the mark of the type of spirit you flow in. Amen? And so there's three other t trips that have gone out and uh, that are doing great things for God. And so we have a heart for the nations uh, and a heart for missions like this church does. And uh, we're winning our city. We're winning our region. And, but we're also going to the nations and reaching the nations. Uh, here's the first scripture God gave me for you. Matthew 117. Matthew 117 is the first scripture God gave me for, for this house uh, tonight as I went to the office and studied and prayed, and then I ran home, and I went swimming with my kids and, and hung out with my four kids and their two friends after a sleepover. They had a sleepover last night. We had a late night last night and uh, having a swimming last night and then pizza and then going in and playing Monopoly and then uh, going to the office, doing my early morning prayer walk. And I want to encourage you to, that is the breakfast of champions. The breakfast of champions is early morning prayer. The breakfast of a champion is early morning prayer. And I want to encourage you to develop that discipline in your life over any other discipline. Is where you develop early morning prayer walks, early morning prayer talks where you develop that relationship with God every morning. Just set your alarm an hour before everybody else. And when that alarm goes off, ruthlessly get up and say, I am going to discipline this body. Flesh, get in alignment. Flesh, get back down there and uh, activate your spirit and go on a prayer walk and meditate on God and meditate on scriptures and, and pray and talk to God. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations that were from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David into the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon into the Christ are 14 generations. And so... God's saying to this house that it's the year of 2014. And from Abraham to David was 14 generations. And from, from David to Christ is 14 generations. And that speaks of 14 is a number in the Bible that speaks of God's number and a God's number of completion. And when he went from 14 generations from Abraham to Christ, and which speaks of the life of faith, Abraham lived the life of faith. Abraham talked the life of faith. Abraham was obedient to the life of faith. And he moved in the spirit of faith. Now, when you go to the book of Galatians now, it says that we are now sons and daughters of Abraham. That we are now supernatural sons and supernatural daughters organically, spiritually connected to Abraham. 
So 14 generations. So God's saying, I'm restoring the walk of faith into harvest time. I'm restoring the walk of faith into your life. I'm restoring the walk of faith, Abrahamic faith into your life, where God speaks something and then you're just going to automatically do it. Amen? You don't reason it out in your head. You don't reason it out in your intellect. God's going to speak it, and by faith, you're going to act, act, and you're going to do it. So God says God is restoring the spirit of faith into this house. He's also, number two, restoring David, the 14 generations from Abraham to David, the intimacy of praise and worship. The intimacy of praise and worship where you will be intimate with the Lord and you will operate in the spirit of covenant. The spirit of David is the spirit of intimacy with praise and worship and the spirit of intimacy between you and the Lord. And that when the Lord speaks something to you and says something to you, you are so one with him. You know the Bible says that he that is connected to the Lord is one in spirit with him. He's one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You're going to be walking in one spirit with the Lord, like an umbilical cord from, from here to heaven. And the, just the nourishment and the, the strength and the, the life of heaven is flowing from heaven to earth right into you because you're operating in the spirit of David. You have the spirit of David on you, intimacy through praise and worship. And number three, 14 generations from David to Christ. God is restoring the spirit of inheritance. That you are going to walk in your inheritance. Each of you are going to walk in your inheritance. It's not something that you are going to work up. It's not something that you're going to earn. Your paycheck is what you earn. An inheritance is received by faith. And inheritance is received by the Spirit of God. Inheritance is received by position. And so God is taking you from, from the spirit of faith into the spirit of intimacy and praise and worship, into the spirit of birthing your inheritance. And you receive your inheritance by being in alignment with the Father. You receive your inheritance by what God has for you, by being obedient sons and daughters. And it's, it's like this, it's like this pipeline that, that, that's from heaven, and, it, and on it it has Abraham. And then on this, this pipeline, that it's exploding in Fargo, North Dakota, all this oil and all this, all this uh, new way of drilling the oil, and it's coming out, and my, my wife's uh, cousin, Bob, is right in the middle of that, uh, in that, in that as a businessman and selling gravel. He's right in the middle of that whole thing, that explosion. But it's like this pipeline of Abraham, God, Abraham, and then David, and then Jesus, and then you. And you're just clamping on. You're just clamping onto that pipeline. And you're on that pipeline, and all of those generational blessings are rushing through that pipeline, right through the pipeline, right through you. That's what I saw today in the Spirit. Uh, over you, over you. He's restoring the spirit of Abraham and the spirit of David and the spirit of Christ on you, the spirit of inheritance on you, amen? And those that are led by the spirit of God, they're the sons of God. That, that word in the Greek, uh, sons, is weos, H-U-I-O-S, weos, H-U-I-O-S. It's that word, there's seven Greek words for growth in the New Testament. The word weos is the son, sons, mature sons, mature daughters of inheritance. Mature sons and mature daughters that walk in their inheritance, that move in their inheritance, that flow in their inheritance. So you being led by the Spirit of God, God says to do this, you do it. God says to do that, you do it. God, you're being led by the Spirit of God. You're going to be a, a we us, mature son and daughter of God, and you are going to walk into your full inheritance. 
You're going to walk into your full inheritance being a mature son and daughter of God. Isn't that awesome? You are a weos. You are a weos. And at 30 years of age, in the biblical times, in the biblical days, when a son became 30 years old, he would be qualified for public service. He would be qualified to work in the synagogue. He would be qualified to work in the city government, to be sitting in the gate. When, when somebody turned 30 years of age, they came into their inheritance. That's what happened when Jesus was 30 years of age, and he went into the waters of baptism into the Jordan and got baptized. And, and, and the Father, this is my beloved weos in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved 30-year-old son. This is my 30-year-old son who is now stepping into his inheritance. And now I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased. Walking in the Spirit, talking in the Spirit, moving in the Spirit, flowing in the Spirit, thinking in the Spirit, moving, affecting people in the Spirit. That is a mature son and daughter of God. That is a mature son and daughter of God. Now, what Jesus accomplished in his lifetime by, by who he was and what he did, now you can attain that through grace and through faith. Now, by faith, you will do what Jesus did at being in, as a son of God, as a natural son from God. Now, by faith, you are going to attain the same thing Jesus did, bringing many sons in the glory. You are now a weos. You are now going to step into your inheritance. You're going to step into it. You're going to step into it this year. 2014, you're going to step into your inheritance. 2014, by faith, you're going to step into it. Because that's what Galatians teaches. The whole book of Galatians, uh, chapter 3, verse 26 to chapter 4, verse 6, talks about us being adopted as sons of Abraham. Remember the pipeline. So you're a son of Abraham, you're a son of David, you're a son of Jesus Christ, you're a son of God. You're on that pipeline. That pipeline is just flowing right through you tonight. That pipeline is just gushing through you tonight. And what stops it and holds it back is unbelief. What stops it and holds it back is sin. See, there's five things that are going to determine where you're at in five years. Number one is the church you attend. Number two is the people you hang around. Number three is your prayer and word life. Number four is the conferences you attend. And number five is your willingness to repent of little sins. Your willingness to repent of little sins. You, you keep that pipeline open and the blessings just keep on flowing. It's all about walking in your inheritance. It's all about walking in your inheritance. Let me give you this one principle that, that, I, that has so affected my prayer life. This has so affected my prayer. And this is a house of prayer for all nations, going to all the nations. This is a house of prayer of, of all nations, going to all the nations. Amen? Amen. And so you can just feel it in the atmosphere. You can just feel it in this place. You can just see it manifesting. You can just see it. it's the same DNA of, of our house. But this, this principle will so impact your prayer life. And it's found in Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, 49. Are you getting anything out of this? I'm just preaching myself happy. I'm just, we're, we're in an $850,000 building program right now and uh, by faith. 
and by faith. And uh, we've been calling in the money and we've been speaking the money in and $10,000 gifts have been coming in and $5,000 gifts have been coming in, $15,000 gifts have been coming in, uh, $18,000 gifts have been coming in, $5,000 gifts have been coming in. And so by faith, I, I think we're at like $600,000 we've raised. By faith. By faith, just, just standing in faith, just speaking it, just believing it, and we're building a new children's sanctuary that, that seats 200 people, 200 children, and, and they, they have a check-in and they have a slide. After they check in, they go down a slide and shoot out the slide in, into the gymnasium into the gymnasium and into the playscape and the play area, uh, the indoor gymnasium that we have. So um, we're, we're believing that. We speak for favor over our government, over our city. Our mayor is bussing in the children, um, three buses, six bus stops, bussing in the children of the city into our VBS. They're bussing our children. Amen. Isn't that awesome? It's his second year doing it. Mayor Neil O'Leary, bus, busing in the kids on their buses, their drivers, their gasoline, their dime. I went to the mayor and I said, we need buses. We don't have buses, but we, you have buses. You have lots of buses. Can you loan us some of your buses and bring in these children that we're working in these neighborhoods uh, that are at-risk children? You know, you want a better city. I want you, would you help us bus them in? And he says, absolutely, we'll bus them in. So we just step out in faith. We just believe God and God. They, built, they put a new cross on the hill. They put a new cross in Waterbury when you ride up 84. They used to be a really small one, uh, and the, the, the founder died, and lo- the, two, the three nuns that got really old lost the vision, and they took the big cross down, and they put a puny cross up there. And, and so we were like, this is Holy Land, USA. This is the city of our God. This is the city where, where the Holy Spirit dwells. This is the city where God's moving. This, and we started prophesying. We went up there with our school, and we did a Jericho march around the top of the mountain. We did a Jericho march around the top of that mountain. We dedicated that mountain back to God. Did you know five months later, they built a $250,000 cross for that? They built a 56 by 26 by 4,000 LED lights on the inside of it. And they put, when you ride by what, the thing lights up, the thing turns 250,000 colors. I mean, you can't, you cannot miss this cross downtown Waterbury on the mount when you ride through. That's the power of prophecy. That's the power of proclamation. That's the power. We're believing God for our city. We're believing God for those 120,000 people. We're believing God for those children. We're believing God. We need to step up. We need to believe God for our city. We need to believe God for our region. We need to believe God for favor. We need to believe God for these things and and speak them in and declare them in. I I tell everybody, you need to have a prayer wall, a prayer board. And so where you put all of the pictures that you're believing God to do in your life, that you're believing God to do in your children that you're believing God to do in your ministry. You need to hang up those pictures all around you and speak and pray those things into being. Amen? And they will come to pass as you stand in faith. They will come to pass as you stand in prayer. They will come to pass as we just believe God to do it. Amen? Not, not, not our own will, not our own might, but God's will and God's might. He's going to do it. And I have a, pictures all over, and I have scriptures all over. All my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great will be the peace of my children. And I have there four pictures above that scripture and another scripture out of Genesis 22 that my seed will sit in the gates of my enemies. In blessings I will bless thee. In multiplyings, I will multiply these. Your seed as the the stars in the heaven and as the sand on the seashore. So I put these scriptures, I put these pictures, and I speak them over my children. I speak them over my ministry. Uh, Psalm 112, 1-3, my children will be mighty in the earth. 
My children will be mighty in the earth. And you speak that out of your mouth. You decree it. You declare it. And you watch God do it in your lifetime. You watch him do it in their lives. You watch him do it uh, right before your eyes. Amen? So, so the mayor's office calls me and says, we're putting a time capsule in under the cross. And we want to know what you want in the time capsule. So I said, okay, well, we're going to put a Bible and we're going to put a, a big bottle of oil, and we're going to put communion. We're going to put the blood, and we're going to put the wine. The wine. We're going to put the bread in it, and we're going to put a proclamation in it. And so we put a proclamation in it that this is the city of our God. This is the city where the King of Glory comes in. We open up the gates, and we let the King of Glory come in. Who is this king of... And we did a proclamation. This is the city of our God. And they buried it three feet under the cross, and they poured cement on it. Perpetual prayer. It's a perpetual prayer before the Lord of what we're believing God to do in our city. Let's have some crazy faith. Let's have some crazy favor. Let's have some crazy, born-again, spirit-filled believers stepping out, believing what God said he was going to do, he's going to do. Amen? And so I want to give you this principle. How many want this principle? <laughs> Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry. Underline that word in your Bible. Tarry. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That word tarry is the word, it's a powerful word. It's the word kathidzo. It's the word kathidzo in the Greek. It's made up of three words. It doesn't, it, it, number one, to throw, cathedral, Bima. It, it means to throw down a cathedral, a seat of rules. Bima, a judgment seat. It, it doesn't mean to, to sit around and be lazy. It means that tarry does not mean you sit around and be lazy and do nothing. Tarry is the word that you sit down on a throne in confidence and rule in judgment. You must rule from the throne of God. Ephesians 1 through 5, chapters 1 through 5, before chapter 6, you need to know where you're seated and you need to know that you are seated in him. Cathidzo, cathidzo. Matthew 23, 1 and 2, you can write that down. It's a reference to Moses' seat of authority. Um, the Pharisees did it. That's what Jesus said. You Pharisees, cathidzo in Moses' seat. Uh, the Pope does it today. He, he puts on a, a, a hat and he picks up his scepter and he marches in and he sits down on that, that big throne in, in, in Rome. That, that's cathidzo. That's a physical illustration of the word cathidzo. Uh, Matthew 25, 31, all nations are under the power of his throne. Mark 16, 19, he is sitting on his throne today. He is cathidzoing on his throne today. John 19, 12, and 13, Pilate had a cathedzo in the natural when he, it says that Pilate sat on the judgment seat. That's what the word cathedzo means. He sat and he did the written judgment against Christ. And then he, he threw that judgment forth on Christ. That's cathedzo. Jesus is in heaven. Uh, Hebrews 8, 1 says that this is the reason why I wrote this book to you that Jesus sat down and cathedzoed on his throne. Hebrews 8.1 was written during Nero's rule. Hebrews 8.1 was written during Nero's rule. He was saying that Jesus... Now, this is the main point of the things we're saying 
We have such a high priest who's seated at the right hand, who is cathedzoed at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. This is the main point of the book of Hebrews. The main point of the book of Hebrews is that Jesus was crucified, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose again and is seated on the right hand of God the Father, and now he is ruling and reigning over all of the earth and all of the universes in complete authority and power and judgment. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. That's the Jesus we serve. Cathidzo. Say that. Cathidzo. Say it again. Cathidzo. Say it again. Cathidzo. Let the revelation of that word get on the inside of you. It means to throw down. It means seat of rules, uh, of authority, the word of God. It means bima, judgment seat, judgment. You... Being now, now look at this. Now watch this. Um, you need to sit on the throne before you do any ministry. This is successful ministry. Here's a principle that changed my life in 2001. This is what makes you successful in the spirit. You see yourself seated with him. You see yourself. This morning, I saw myself in prayer, and I saw myself seated with Jesus. I saw him sitting over Greenwich. I saw him seated over this city, this town, and I saw him sending angels out. And I saw him sending decrees out and declares out, and I saw him releasing heaven on earth. I saw him doing that in the spirit realm. Now, you see Ephesians chapter 1 tells us the eyes of our understanding to be opened to see this glorious inheritance in the saints. This glorious inheritance. This is your inheritance. The Ephesians 1, high, Christ, high and lifted up. But then go to Ephesians chapter 2, and it teaches you in verses 5 and 6. Look at this. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. Come on, Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. You've got to highlight this in your Bible. You've got to highlight this in your Bible. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. Say cathedzo. Say cathedzo. Say cathedzo. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us up together and made us cathedzo together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's raised you up. He has raised you up. Now you're seated with him in heavenly places. Now you are cathedzoed with him. Now you are cathedzoed in Christ. That's your inheritance. That's your inheritance. Paul the apostle prayed in Ephesians 1 that you would see your inheritance. That you would see who you are in Christ. That you would see the exceeding greatness of his power working through you. This was the principle the Apostle Paul was talking about. That you would now cathedzo with Christ. That you would cathedzo with him every morning. That you would wake up every morning and you would sit with him in heavenly places. That you would spend time with him. That you would meditate with him. I just did a study on the word meditate. I just did a study on the word meditate. And it means to speak to yourself. It means to mutter. It means to ponder. It means to imagine. It means to imagine. It means to role play your future. It means to think of these things in heavenly places. And it means to speak them out of your mouth. 
I want to encourage you as, as we're going to open up the altars, and I believe there's going to be a healing time. I believe there's going to be healing. If you need a healing in your body, I believe that there's going to be healing anointing released into your body. I believe that if you're seeking God to do something in your life, I believe it's going to be released into your life tonight by the Spirit of God. Amen? I want to charge you. I want to charge you with Cathedzo. If the worship team would come, Jason, if you'd come. and I want to see you to see yourself every morning. I want you to see yourself seated in Christ. I want you to see yourself with God, with Abraham, David, with Christ, and you right on that pipeline. And I want you to see that gushing power of the Holy Spirit gushing through you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But what's the beginning of that verse say? As the scripture hath said, he who believes in me, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. To the level of your belief is to the level of your flow. Jesus said to the level of your belief is to the level of your flow. If you believe me to flow in you and through you to the nations, I'm going to flow in you and through you to the nations. If you believe in me to flow in you and through you to the city, I'm going to flow in you and through you to the city. To the level of your belief is to the level of your flow. What's hindering us is our stinking thinking. What's hindering us is our stinking thinking. Let's get out of our carnal thinking and let's get into the mind of the Lord. Let's get out of our just our physical everyday stuff and let's get into our spirit where God is speaking tonight, where God is leading tonight. It's a night of new, renewed faith for you. It's a night of intimate praise and worship for you. It's a night of inheritance for you. This is your night to receive your inheritance. And your inheritance is you seated with Christ in heavenly places. From there, everything else is going to flow. From there, everything else is going to flow. So I just want to open up the altars right now. If that's you, just come right now.